Apple's HomeKit is one of the best smart home platforms out there, thanks to the fact that it supports a wide variety of devices and works seamlessly with your other Apple products. But because it's so versatile, it can sometimes be a little tricky to use. Whether you're new to HomeKit or just want to pick up a few extra tips and tricks, here's how to use HomeKit and the Apple Home app. I've separated this video into sections, and you can skip to those sections using the video's chapters. If you like the video, please subscribe to my channel. It really helps support my work and I would appreciate that support. The first time you open up the Home app to get started with HomeKit, it will probably be to add your first accessory. Adding accessories is extremely easy with HomeKit, considering the fact that HomeKit mostly uses QR codes to quickly and easily add those devices. To add a device, simply open the Home app and tap the plus button in the top right hand corner. Then tap the add accessory button, and if you have the QR code available, scan it in the camera that pops up. Alternatively, you can manually add the eight digit code that accompanies the QR code if the code isn't scanning properly. Normally, the QR QR code will be on both the manual of the device and on the device itself, but if it's not on the device itself, it's worth writing down the code in case you lose the manual. After the device has been added to your home, you'll be able to assign it to a room, give it a name, and select whether or not you want to include it in your favourite accessories. Favourite accessories are easily accessible in the main screen of the home app, plus they can be accessed through your phone's control centre, which is even easier. Sometimes devices won't connect to HomeKit through a QR code. That may be because HomeKit support was added through a software update after the product's release, or because it works with a wider range of devices. You can't add accessories through the Mac app or Apple Watch app. Once you have added a few accessories, you want to be able to quickly and easily navigate to them. If you've assigned an accessory as a favourite, you'll be able to access that accessory simply by opening up the app. Not all accessories will be favourites though. To access accessories in other rooms, tap on the Rooms button on the menu bar at the bottom of the display. You can then swipe to different rooms by swiping left or right, or navigate to a different room with the menu button on the top left of the display. Within those rooms, you can also rearrange accessories like you would apps on the iPhone by tapping the Edit button on the top right. You can edit some room settings too, like the background wallpaper of the room. To do that, tap on the menu button on the top left and press on the room settings button. Tap on the room you want to edit, then you'll be able to access the settings. You'll also be able to assign the room to a zone, but we'll get into zones a little later. On the Mac, as on the iPhone, your favourite accessories will be available right away by simply opening up the app. To access rooms, tap on the rooms button at the top of the window, or tap on the home icon at the top left and select the room you want to navigate to. You can't rearrange accessories in rooms like you can on the iPhone. To edit a room on the Mac, navigate to the room you want to edit, then tap the edit button on the top of the display and press edit room. After your accessories are added to your home, you'll be able to control them, which is very simple to do, though the way you control them will depend on the accessory itself. Most devices that simply turn on and off are controlled simply by tapping on the corresponding tile for that accessory. If the device is on and you tap on the tile, it will turn off. If it's off, tapping on it will turn it on. Sometimes accessories offer more control. For example, most smart bulbs allow for dimming, and some can change colour too. To access that extra control, hold down on the accessory you want to control, and then you'll gain access to more settings. For example, with a dimmer bulb, you can slide up or down the slider to control the dimming amount. You'll also have quick access to colours below the slider, and you can select more colours by tapping on the edit button. The Mac app works in a similar way. Click on the accessory to easily control it, and right click it to access more settings and control. On the Apple Watch, you can control devices if they're a favourite, again, simply by tapping on the device. You can also control some extra settings by tapping on the three dot menu button. You may want to edit an accessory after you've already added it. For example, you might want to move the accessory to a new room and have it show up in the correct room after it has already been added to your home. It's very easy to edit an accessory, both on iOS and on the Mac. To do so on the iPhone, navigate to the accessory, hold down on it for a second, and then when it expands, tap the settings button on the bottom right of the display. You can then rename the device, choose a new room for it, group it with other accessories, and more. The process on the Mac is pretty easy too. Right click on the accessory you want to edit, then tap on the settings button. You'll then have access to the same settings as on the iPhone. Once you've added a few different devices to your home, you may want to group them. Grouping devices allows you to control all of them at the same time. A good example of why you might want to do this is if you have multiple smart bulbs set up in the same location, and only use them at the same time. I have three bulbs in the bathroom, and there's never a situation where I only want to use one of them. Grouping accessories is pretty easy. 
On the iPhone, hold down on one of the accessories you want in the new group, then tap the settings button in the bottom right of the screen to access more settings. Scroll down and press the group with other accessories button. You'll then be able to name the group of accessories and select which accessories you want to include it in the group. Once you've done that, you'll be able to include the group in favorites, if you so choose, and select which room the group is a part of. On the Mac, right click on one of the accessories you want to group and press the settings button. Then scroll down to the group with other accessories button, after which you can name the group and select the other accessories in the group. Once you've done that, you'll be able to select which room the group should be in and include it in favorites if you want. In some situations, you may want to get notifications in HomeKit. For example, if you have a HomeKit security camera, you'll probably want to get notifications if it sees motion when you're not home. The Home app makes it easy to manage all your notifications in one area. To do so, open the Home app, then tap the Home icon on the top left. Then, scroll down to the Notifications section and you'll be able to see your notifications for cameras, sensors, locks, and so on. You can then turn those notifications on or off. On the Mac, open the Home app, then tap the Edit menu item, then Edit Home. Scroll down to the notifications section and you'll be able to change notifications for cameras, sensors, locks, and so on. Changing notifications on the Mac or iPhone does not impact the other platform, so you can choose to get different kinds of notifications on your Mac than you do on your iPhone. The Apple Watch notifications, however, will mirror your iPhone notifications. A HomeKit hub can seriously change how you use HomeKit. That's because of the fact that without a HomeKit hub, you can only control many accessories when you're within Bluetooth range, which means really only being able to use them when you're at home. A hub, however, communicates with your accessories locally and communicates with you directly through a data connection, allowing you to control accessories from wherever you are and have automations run without you having to be home. A HomeKit hub can be an Apple HomePod, an Apple TV, or an iPad, as long as you keep the iPad at home and don't take it out. The way you set up a hub will depend on what you use. If you're using a HomePod or an Apple TV as a hub, you don't have to do anything. As long as it's signed into the same iCloud account as HomeKit, it will automatically set itself up as a HomeKit hub. If you use an iPad as a HomeKit hub, on the iPad, head to settings, tap on your name at the top, then make sure that home is turned on. Then go back to the main settings menu, tap home, and turn on the setting that says use this iPad as a home hub. One of the best things about smart home platforms is setting up automation. Automation allows accessories and groups of accessories to work automatically without you needing to manually control them, and that really unlocks the power of the smart home. Creating automations is really quite simple. On the iPhone, simply open up the Home app and tap the Automation tab at the bottom of the display. Then tap the plus icon at the top right of the display and choose what you want to trigger the automation. You can automate devices to work based on your location, the time of day, other accessories, or when sensors detect something and you have different settings based on the automation you choose. For example, if you choose the time of day, you'll be able to select the time. If you choose to automate based on other accessories, you'll need to select the accessory that triggers the automation. And if you choose to automate based on a sensor, you'll need to select the sensor and what it needs to sense. Once you've selected a trigger for the automation, you'll need to choose which accessories are controlled. You'll be able to control most of your accessories and you can select them simply by tapping on them. Tap the next button at the top and then select the state you want the accessories to be in whether it be on, off, and so on. You can also hold down on the accessory to change different settings. For example, you might want a light to be set at 50% brightness rather than just on at full brightness. Once you've selected the state of accessories, you can choose to test the automation if you want or simply hit the done button at the top. To edit the automation after you've already created it, head to the automation tab and tap on the automation you want to edit. You'll then be able to change the automation. Creating automations on the Mac works pretty much the same as on the iPhone. Open the home app and tap the plus button on the top right of the window, then tap add automation. Select what you want to trigger the automation, choose the settings you want, and select your chosen accessories to be controlled in the automation. And then set the state of the accessories you want in the automation. HomeKit Secure Video works slightly different than other automation. HomeKit Secure Video essentially allows security cameras to be completely contained within HomeKit, and footage that's recorded through Secure Video depends on your iCloud account. With a 200 gigabyte iCloud account, you'll be able to store footage from one camera, while with a two terabyte account, you'll be able to store footage from up to five cameras. Once you have a camera set up on HomeKit Secure Video, you should get a live feed of the camera in favorites or in the room that it's set up in. Tap on that and you can access more settings. At the bottom of the 
screen, for example, you'll be able to access past recorded footage and share that footage with the share button if you so choose. At the top of the display, you'll see a settings button, which is how you can control automation for your video. Video cameras don't really automate with other accessories in HomeKit yet, but you can set the camera to be on or off depending on your location. You can also set the camera to record footage based on it detecting something, like a person, animal, vehicle, or something else. On the Mac, HomeKit Secure Video works similarly. You'll be able to share footage with the share button at the bottom of the screen, and change settings with the settings button at the top of the display. Currently, HomeKit Secure Video only supports footage at up to 1080p. Scenes are kind of like groups in that they control multiple accessories, but scenes allow you to set different states for different accessories depending on what you might want in the moment. For example, you might want to create a go to bed scene, which will involve your smart lock being locked, your lights all being off, and the thermostat being set to a specific temperature. Creating a scene on the iPhone is very easy. Open up the Home app and tap the plus icon at the top right of the display, and select the Add Scene button. The Home app will suggest some scenes for common situations, like going to bed, waking up, coming home, and so on. For the purpose of this video, we're going to create a totally new scene. Tap on the Custom button and name the scene. Then press the Add Accessories button and select the accessory that you want included in the scene. Select the state you want the accessories to be in as part of the scene. Then, you can test the scene or add more accessories if you want. And you can include it as part of your favourites screen. On the Mac, open the app and tap the plus icon at the top right of the display. Tap to add a scene and then follow the same instructions as on the iPhone. Zones are similar to rooms in that they allow access to a few accessories in the same area, but they can include multiple rooms. For example, you might want a zone for upstairs and a zone for downstairs, which will allow you to control all the accessories of a type in that zone with Siri. To create a zone, head to the Home app and tap the Rooms button at the bottom of the display. Then tap the Menu button at the top left and press the Room Settings button. Select one of the rooms you want included in the zone and tap the Zone button, and either choose one of the suggested zones or select to create new. Type the label to create new zone. Then tap the Back button and select the next room you want included in the zone. Tap the Zone button and choose the zone. You have to do this with each room. On the Mac, open the app and navigate to one of the rooms you want in the zone. Then, click the Edit menu and tap Room Settings. You'll then be able to assign it to a zone or create a new zone. Follow the same instructions for each room you want in the zone. Once you've created a zone, you'll be able to use Siri, for example, to control all the lights in the zone. From time to time, you might want to remove an accessory from your home. For example, you might be upgrading an accessory to a new model and want to remove the old model. To remove an accessory from your home on the iPhone, hold down on the accessory and tap the settings button on the bottom right of the screen. Then scroll down to the bottom of the settings and tap the remove accessory button. You won't be able to remove an accessory that comes from another service, like Philips Hue. To remove a single Philips Hue bulb, you'll have to do it through the Hue app. On the Mac, navigate to an accessory, right click the accessory and tap the settings button. Then, scroll down to the bottom of the settings and press the remove accessory button. There are plenty of reasons you might want to give someone access to your home accessories. Perhaps a new roommate or partner is moving in, or perhaps a guest is staying for a few days. HomeKit accommodates for either of these situations. To add someone to your home, open the Home app and tap the Home button on the top left. Under the People section, tap the Invite button, after which you can send an invitation to people in your contacts list. Note, they will have to have an iOS device to be able to control your home. You can also tweak what people have access to in your home. By default, people you add have access to everything in your home, but you can tweak that by tapping on their name, then controlling the setting you want. For example, you can change who can add or edit accessories, and tweak who can control accessories remotely. You can also remove someone from your home here, which you might want to do if a guest has left, for example. On the Mac, open the Home app, tap the Edit menu, then tap Edit Home. Then you can invite people to your home and tweak what people can do, and remove them if you need to. Unfortunately, HomeKit doesn't allow users to give access to only certain accessories or rooms, so even if you have a guest room in your home, you can't enable access for only that room. There's thankfully not much you have to do if you want to use Siri with HomeKit. I'm not going to run through all the commands you can use with Siri, but here are a few examples. You can control individual accessories or groups of accessories with commands like turn off the office lights, turn on the TV, lock the front door, or watch the temperature in the living room. You can also control scenes with commands like good night, set up my gaming scene, and so on. Siri commands also work on the Apple Watch, with a HomePod, on the Apple TV, and on the Mac. 
You can control certain aspects of your home on the Apple Watch too, though the best way to do so is through Siri. The interface on the Apple Watch allows you to control your favourite accessories and see feeds from favourite cameras. You can control some extra settings like dimmer lights with the three dot menu button. If you've given up on HomeKit or you want to start again from scratch, you can delete your home. Keep in mind that to do so, you may need to factory reset all your individual accessories and to re-add them, you will need the HomeKit codes. To delete your home, open the app and scroll down to the Remove Home button. Tap on the button and follow the on-screen instructions. On the Mac, open the app, then click the Edit menu and then click Edit Home. Scroll down and tap the Remove Home button. Thanks so much for watching this video and again, please subscribe if it was helpful to you. My name is Christian and I'll see you next time. See ya.